looking at here. So uh, we took an uh, Excel sheet that we were given for to calculate the stresses in the steel and concrete, and then added in a bunch of other calculations to be able to manipulate all these, all the points in yellow can be manipulated to what you want and then give you a cost estimate of what material and everything went through. Um, right now it's 144. Oops. So width wise, 144, so 12 foot drops down to 11 foot drops price. What does that do to the stresses? Stresses up there. So we're at, so for 11 foot, we're at 98 megapascals. 44, similar with 198. Okay. What really, so you can go to the columns. If you want to go down to the four columns, get the four. You see the pascals end up dropping, or it goes up, so not more stress. With four, you have about 183. Um, can you change the thickness of the bridge? Yeah, let's try this. So the thickness from nine inches, you go up to 10 inches, it increases the stress in the bridge itself. Go to 12, even more. Um, so if you want, for bridge height, you can actually change that. So if you want to go up to, say, 14 feet, everything changes, gives you a different cost. Including in that, it changes all your forces all the way through and gives you a new did you do calculations on the column? Yes. Like, what's the, is that up there, or am I just not seeing it? Or is that what, like what the force through each column would be, and then what kind of stress that creates? I know that's maybe beyond what the course is, but. Um, force through each column. I know we had to use it for the footing, because we also have. I remember we looked it up, and it was not an issue, but I just wondered if you actually did the calculations. I know we had some of that calculated, I think, in the, in somewhere in the footings. Um, because we have the footing set as well where you can change so the some of the, the footing sizes to account for your, your waste. So soil, soil bearing capacity is, that's what we have for that. Okay. So per square foot or per square inch, we have a calculation in there of your pressure that it would take each column. Okay. And then it just so that's the footing. Yes. What about the columns themselves? Do you have that? If you don't, it's fine. Um, yeah. Then I bet that's it. It's four forces, right, right. So these columns are cylindrical, I assume? Yes. So the yes. diameter and the height? Yes. So. so those are the, whether you have five, four, or three yes. columns. Yeah, right. So the maximum there is 70,000 pounds? Yes, on a three column inch pound structures. I'm sorry, what's that? No, yeah, for a three those dollars. should be those yeah. should be in pounds, right? So yeah. let me just seventy thousand, one, two, three, and then you have about a foot in diameter. Wait, that's actually divided by two because you have two columns. Yes, yeah, us. So each column sees half of that. Yep. So thirty-five thousand pounds across that uh, that area, which is going to be pi six squared, right? Yep. Oops. Yeah, I did the, the two. So that has 
309 PSI, which, can you scroll over a little bit? So, 500. Right. And that's, you know, that's a rough estimate. So we're in that, we're below the, wait, wait what's, what was it? I don't remember what the max is. That's the, wait, you want to change. So, I just don't remember the. But I just want to know the limiting factor of what you said. Three hundred nine psi. Oh, so nothing. Yep. Which is I thought. Well, so it's just good to know that the columns will support themselves as well. Okay. What's the rough diameter of those columns? Twelve inches. Please. And if you wanted to change that, you can change that as well. So when you guys did this, are there any particular concerns or uh, issues or weak areas? Or do you have any comments about, uh, about those kinds of things? I think that the structure of the bridge itself was not really a concern, especially how far beyond the strength needed we are. Um, I think it, it, it's going to exceed the, what it needed for. Um, I think our biggest concern and unknown would have been how it's going to be built was something we weren't exactly sure, which may have changed how we would have designed it a little bit. Um, but I think that this design itself as is, is, is going to work pretty well. Like, what type of concrete forms do yeah. they have to be able to? I mean, you're saying wood is a hot or a low compared to Yeah, I believe they do use wood for, for the form. Okay. Yeah. I think the one thing that these guys, everybody ignored is, and it's just fuzzy with our knowledge of is. We, we didn't take into, we just assumed that the water's not going to knock it over. Because yeah. you kind of said it was a slow moving It river. is. It is too. Uh, and then the, the ground, you know, we didn't know much about the shape of the, the riverbed and the soil. You know, these are things right. that I, I mean, you, I know these guys did some research on it. So, so. But th those were kind of the unknown, like, yeah. well, we don't really know what. Mm -hmm. I know that. Uh, I'm wondering if, if we can go back to the picture of the bridge itself, and if we could just take a minute. Um, uh, so, the footings would be put in first, correct? Yes. Yeah. They would be laid first, and then the columns uh, would be put in. Okay, roughly the dimension on the footings, uh, the square rectangular uh, footing, Rough, what's the rough dimension on one? They had this on the last slide too. Uh, 132 by 20 by 12. Okay, so a foot by foot and a half. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we did the, the width of the bridge essentially to get yeah. that. Okay, can you go back to the drawing again? Okay, so those footings, the columns are roughly a foot in diameter. Right. And you're saying there's two layers of rebar in a crisscross pattern in the footings. Yep. Yes. And there are vertical rebars in the columns. Yes. And how many rebars roughly are in the columns and what is the pattern? Do you have any sense of that? The, the pattern itself would be essentially, I think it's, can I draw on here? Yep. So if you're looking down at the end of your, your column, the idea would be that you would have rebar space a distance from your edges here, and then you would have another piece, you know, periodically spaced going up that would tie you right. together, and then you tie that. Is that together. the number of rebar you're correct that you're showing? If you're showing six, is okay. that what you We said eight. It was a six. We were doing a six vertically. Yeah. Okay. okay, six, and it was a five, I think you said five eighths diameter? Yes. Okay. And then we had intended to, like we talked about before, when that comes out, 
with your, you know, how we're running to attach the deck that way. Okay. So that way this would be protruding after you throw the columns, and then you would put the deck on top of that and tie in your rebar together with the rebar on the deck before you pour it. All right, on the vertical columns, if there are two rebar that are two separate pieces, uh, is it right? Do we assume then that they're just tied together with some type of a... Yeah, you're talking about if, you, if you've got a, a you know, cutoff and you're going to get... Yeah, that, I think that's the general practice is you go ahead and, and tie it. And I would assume then, you know, if you're going to do that, you'd want to try and, and come to the side. You don't want to go further from your edge distance, but I think you want to come here and then tie that together. It, I, I'm not exactly sure what the overlap requirement is, but you know, several inches and then tie it together. Okay, and then I, so then we come to the deck and they put the forms up for the deck, and you're saying they uh, they would lay uh, one grid work first, or or both grid work, but both there's two grids. Yeah. Um, are they offset in any way, or are, are they right above each other? Generally, they would be directly above each other, essentially. But they, they, they're, so if you've got a nine inch deck, one's about an inch up from here, and the other's about an inch down. Okay, but what is that, that square opening? Is that directly above on each one, or are they offset? Oh, I, I thought, okay. so, yeah, the way we have it designed right now, they're, they're directly above. Um, so they'd be, you know, they'd be directly on top of each other. And the way that you would, that we would have you install it would be, you would set your forms depending on how you would do it. Ideally, you, you know, if, if you were going to pour it there, you'd have it supported from the bottom, and you would get your rebar set, your first layer, and then you would support it um, underneath with stands. Um, yeah, they're going to be consumable stands essentially, and right. you set them up in different locations to keep it the height you want off the deck. Right, and then you go back with your second layer, and then you support that off that one. So okay, I don't know if you know this, all. would those be two separate pours at two different times, or would that all be done at the same time? Ideally, you would do it all at once, because otherwise you would get a... a yeah, you want two, you want one pour. Yeah, yeah. if, if okay. we can, the, the concrete then. Yeah, you, want all, the two. you want it all. Right. Yeah. Do you one have any idea how you time. separate those, uh, some kind of metal tie you use to separate you can use the bamboo. bamboo. Yeah. You just pull the bamboo out. And yeah. Pour the, okay. So once you get the concrete in there, you could pull out or just leave the bamboo in there. So basically creating this matrix of rebar yep. and pouring over it in one pour and letting it, letting it cure. Uh, are there any expansion joints in the bridge deck at all or any points where the bridge uh, can relieve stresses? I'm going to say not, I didn't do that. No. Yeah, we didn't account for that necessarily. This is India too there. But yeah, I didn't. Temperature swing is not going to slow. That's that's kind of what I assumed is that it wasn't going to be as large of a temperature swing. I wasn't accounting for you know okay. the frost and, and all that. Right. Uh, I assumed it was going to remain pretty constant or you know at least above a temperature where we're going to have to deal with that much stress on it. Okay. Um, and and I, the other thing I noticed you've got two vertical columns uh, uh, on each footing. Yes. And you feel that's adequate. And it looks like those vertical columns are kind of. Uh, space like where a car would be spaced or it would hold uh, depends on the width of the, yeah. of the car or the points of the deck. Or do you, did, did you have a dimension between those columns? It was the quarter points. I'm quarter sorry. points of the width of the deck. 25% from each side. Oh, okay. So, so it's 12 feet, 3 right. feet in from each side, right? Okay. So it divides the deck into four and positions the columns like that. Okay. And again, at this point, we kind of had it set so you could. We had this; it would it would support what you needed, and we had the Excel sheet. So if you wanted to add more support, or if you wanted to make larger columns, or you know, if you, if you saw it and thought you know we need more support, then, then you could do that. Well, my assumption is they just go with the mm -hmm. the diagram that you presented yeah. because and, you researched that yeah. diagram. And we, the, what we're presenting is what we would you know what we would have built. Okay, so hold on, Bob. There's another group, and we're halfway done. Okay, so I know you, and you'll keep talking until I stop you. So. Just one real quick: the rails and the side rails at all. Do you have any comments on their construction? One thing that we we talked about a little bit before coming here. Number one was the the curve. What we didn't account for in the drawing is there needs to be some sort of drainage um, beyond actually putting the railings on. Um, you need to have some sort of drainage in there. If you know. If it floods, it gets on top, you need to have a way to get that off. And number two, 
if you want to, we weren't sure if you just wanted to stick bamboo, you know, in there when it was curing and then tie it with ropes, you know, however you want to do it. Um, the curve itself is designed to keep the cars on there. The, the tires on the vehicle aren't that big, so it's going to keep it from rolling off. But to keep pedestrians on there, you can do, I don't know what the capability of getting actual metal railings are, or, you know, a, a, just a metal post and you can even, rope. Or you can even pour rope. railings. You can form up concrete yeah. railing. Yeah. Uh, our spreadsheet is actually formatted to the point if you wanted to make that curve all the way up four feet high, you could do that as well. Yeah, to see. Yeah. All right. Thanks. All right.